there everyone. Um, I've for a long time been uh, really really wanted to do a video, uh, a thorough video that explains all about hack holes. So basically what you see on the table here is a lot of different hack holes and this is all from, uh, from uh, Whiting which makes uh, the best hack holes in the world. So today we're gonna talk about what is the difference between hen and rooster, what is the difference between a saddle and a cape and, uh, and what are these uh, different types of feathers uh, best suited for and exactly what do you use for what types of flies. So um, this furrow uh, walkthrough will start out with uh, rooster capes. So let's talk about roosters. And um, when you talk about roosters the, and whiting in particular, there are three things you should first of all we need to we need to address. The first thing is that these roosters come in three different uh, variations. Uh, there is more, but there are three general variations. One is that you can get the the roosters in clear, complete colors, something like this, where you see the color is all the way through. It's very very clear, and I'm gonna call that just ordinary rooster. Then you can get grizzly variations, and grizzly feathers are feathers that has darker markings and kind of like stripes all along the feathers. That gives some really really nice effect to a lot of flies. A really really nice effect to a lot of flies, and is is generally very very sought after. Uh, the last thing is you can get a, a Batcher variation of all of this. And Batcher has some nice, nice effects also. When you see a Batcher hackle, uh, the Batcher means that the center of the feather is dark and that it's only uh, the, a portion of the tips of the feathers that actually has another color. And this gives a nice center of darkness, nice dark center, and then the tips of the feathers will be um, will be in, in whatever color the rest of the feather is. So you have Batcher, you have Grizzly, and you have the ordinary ones. Okay. Whiting comes in a lot of different grades. Um, uh, they have the poor grade, which is their, their least best, because when you're talking about whiting capes, you cannot talk about poor or bad quality. It's just their least best quality. Uh, and the quality is, is depending on the amount of feathers on a cape, and also how many of the cape uh, of the feathers are damaged. It's very, very few uh, on any given uh, whiting hackle, but there will be, uh, on, the, on the pool for instance, there will be a few feathers that can be damaged. So the amount of feathers and, and, uh, and, and the overall quality of the individual feather is what uh, uh, whiting is rating. So you have the pool grade, then you have the bronze grade, then you have uh, the silver grade, then gold, and then platine. Uh, but platine and gold is something you don't see uh, very often. They are extremely, extremely rare. Uh, I, had a, I had one of these uh, Whiting Rooster saddles. I once had the opportunity to sell one platinum saddle, and, um, and uh, <laughs> I made a silent auction on Facebook, uh, where I had, in my mind, I had set exactly how much I wanted for, for that cape, and then I wrote a, a long story, took some individual pictures of it, because it was such such a unique product and uh, and then within seven minutes somebody had offered me uh, the price I had said in my mind would be the price I would let it go for and uh, I promised him that uh, I wouldn't tell anyone how much he uh, he offered and, and bought that uh, that saddle for but but the platine is just yeah maybe 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 15 maybe 20 a year is graded platine so with that being said um, let's just dig into all these different cape types the first one I want to show you is these. These are what Whiting themselves call 4B, and basically they are uh, rooster capes from their uh, food production. They make uh, they make uh, roosters for eating as well, and uh, and uh, and these are are Whiting's uh, Whiting's most budget uh, budget feathers. As you can see, they're nice and big, have some really really nice colors, and there is a lot of feathers on here. And when you're talking about uh, capes and, uh, and stuff like that, you also have to discuss um, the possibility of, of buying, uh, the difference between buying a full cape and, uh, and, and actually buying uh, a cheap bag of loose feathers. When you buy a, bag, a cheap bag of loose feathers, uh, you get a product that is not very good, but that is reflected in the price. Um, and, and also you get a bag of feathers that are very, very uniform and not very diverse uh, when it comes to, to what sizes these will be usable for. When you buy a cape, uh, you get very small feathers to maybe, let's say, 10, 14, size 10 or 14, and then you get a great variety of different sizes all the way up here. So I 
always recommend people to buy a full cape, at least if it's, it's in a color or something that they're gonna use a lot, then buy a full cape. You will have a cape like this for many, 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 many flies. And, uh, and also the quality of the individual feather from a cape from whiting compared to, to what you can get in a bag of loose feathers is just uh, very, very, very big. Uh, what, you, what you need to be looking for when looking for good quality feather is you want feathers that has the right properties for fly tying. I'm just going to pick one out here. And what you're looking for is basically a feather where there is uh, as, as few as possible and hopefully none at all of the, uh, of the feather fibers here that are damaged. That's the first thing, uh, because if they're damaged, your fly is not going to look very good. The second thing is, what you need is you need to have a hackle that has a hackle stem that is as thin as possible, as thin as possible, as bendy as possible, and as durable as possible. Because the more durable this is, the more durable your flies will be. The thinner the stem is, the easier it will be for you to actually make pretty beautiful, wonderful flies, especially when it comes to, to where you, you have to tie down your head and stuff like that. But also, uh, the thinner the stem is, the easier it is to hide inside dubbing and stuff like that. So, the quality of the individual feather is amazing compared to a lot of other things. What you want to do, um, and uh, I think <laughs> I failed to mention that, these rooster capes, like this 4B, are typically used for something like this. You know, ordinary, standard, wet flies, body hackles, palmer hackles, uh, for a lot of different things, woolly buggers, and uh, for instance, this, uh, the front hackle here on this pink hole demon, and stuff like that, because the rooster feathers are very, very, very transparent, very thin, and they make up the ideal way of making a body hackle. Because um, when you're tying flies, and you, you, you often, even though it's something as pink as this one, you still want this to look like food. And food are transparent and, uh, and elusive and stuff like that, because otherwise it would have been eaten and gone extinct. And these, these, uh, these rooster cape feathers here are perfect for that. They're perfectly suited for making, making these elusive, transparent body hackles. They're also nice as a front hackle for something, uh, something like this, for a lot of different salmon flies and stuff like that. But mostly for salmon flies, you want your, your, your front hackle to be dense, to give it that dense front and then tapering gradually away. And, and, uh, and uh, the, the hen capes and hen saddles are better for that. So these are for wet flies, streamers, body hackles and saltwater flies and stuff like that. They're ideal for that. The next, uh, the next item on the list here is uh, Whiting's Coq de Lyon hackles. Coq de Lyon, or however you pronounce that. Um, they're basically rooster capes, again, big, big and excellent, excellent quality. But these, uh, these differ a lot from the ordinary ones because these has striations. These have small markings that really make them stand out and, and, and generally just look a lot like something fish would eat. They come in an, an enormous amount of different colors, of course, and stuff like that. But, um, but the striations and, and the markings on these feathers are just truly, truly beautiful and wonderful. Um, also, again, uh, ideally suited for, for streamers and wet flies and woolly buggers and stuff like that. The next, uh, the next um, in, in, the, in the whiting line is their, um, is their American hackles. And the American roosters um, look like this, again, big, big, big capes. Um, these are the flagship ship for whiting for wet flies and, uh, and streamers and stuff like that. These are the ones they have been perfecting for many, many years. And, uh, and the amount of hackles on this is just insane. And, uh, and, and the, the, the lighting in, in the hackles are just wonderful to look at. Um, and also the hackle stems are just basically perfect. They're thin, they're durable, they're very flexible, and, uh, and, and the quality of this is just the best there is. Um, so these are the three different types of rooster, uh, rooster let's say, in general, more ordinary rooster capes for, for streamers and stuff like that. And then there are some speciality uh, rooster capes. This is the Whiting Spay. 
and the writing space is 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 a completely different um, a completely different uh, type of uh, of uh, of, uh, of roosters. Uh, they're called uh, the, the race is called silkies, and uh, and and these have some very very specialized feathers that is fairly fairly long, very very thin, and very very lively in the water. Um, we use them a lot here in Scandinavia for for shrimp patterns. Uh, this color, the salmon pink, has been immortalized by <laughs> by a Danish dude called uh, Ka Klaus Eriksen, who made something a fly called Pedigrisen, which is probably, in my mind at least, the best uh, the best shrimp ever produced. And they make phenomenally uh, big, lively hackles for for all types of streamers. They're also particularly well uh, uh, if you want to tie something that looks that that imitates something like heron. Uh, which is what they were intended to be uh, uh, when, when Whiting first started these. And, and the development of this has just been insane. If you take one of these capes that is maybe four years old, um, you will see that the amount of feathers are, are a lot less than what they are now. So when you buy these, make sure that the, where you get them from, you get them from, from a shop that has a fairly large, uh, that sells fairly, fairly many of these, because then you'll, make sh you'll be sure to get something of the, what, let's say, newest, uh, newest generation, because these improve generation for generation, definitely. So, so get something that is new and fresh. Don't get something that has been laying around gathering dust for five or six years. Then you'll get something that is not as good as as uh, the current ones are. Also comes in a lot of different colors and stuff like that. That was all the, the whiting roosters for, um, for, for streamers and saltwater flies and stuff like that. But then there is the thing that whiting probably are the most famous for and what they have done uh, to, uh, <laughs> what they have, they have made into to kind of their tra trademark. And that are the dry fly uh, capes. Again, a cape is a good option to go for when you're, when you're buying uh, dry fly hackles because on a cape you will have for a lot of different, for a lot of different, uh, different sizes. What Whiting has done during the past many, many years is simply to, to keep a very close track on exactly what types of, uh, of hens and roosters produces the best quality feathers for exactly fly, fly tying. So Whiting has, has a very, very serious breeding program to ensure that the best quality of feathers is the one that he breeds. So, so when Tom uh, started out doing this, he, he was kind of a pioneer. And, uh, and what he has perfected is, is basically the feathers for fly tying. These comes in a lot of different variations, and he has three different uh, dry fly uh, lines. He has the high and dry, which uh, is, is very similar, but comes in a lot of different colors from the, uh, from the red label, which this is. This is basically their, 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 their core of dry fly hackles. And then there is the Heapert Miner series as well. Heapert Miner is a different, uh, was a different company at one time that Whiting bought and then continued to breed on on, on that company's trademark line of feathers. And the Hebert Miner um, uh, particularly um, was, was good at breeding, uh, breeding different colors of roosters uh, without having to dye them. So all Hebert Miner capes are, are uh, natural colored. None of them have been colored. Some of these dry fly capes for, for uh, high and dry, for instance, and for the red label has been. And uh, now let's talk about the uh, the saddles. When you look at a at a at, at a rooster, you have the cape. Uh, you you normally you would have the head up here, and then you have the cape. And then uh, if you continue down the back of the rooster, you will get to the saddle. So the cape is is the the portion of the the the, the rooster that is close to the head, and this is this is kind of like closer and closer to the tail. Um, uh, there is a, diff a lot of different saddles uh, out there. This is Whiting's 4B saddles. And, uh, and what these are very, very good for is basically the same thing as the capes. Um, uh, normally, these saddles are less expensive than the capes. Um, and that's also, the, uh, that's also what, what happens here. These are a bit, uh, bit less expensive than the capes. Um, and, uh, and in these saddles, you get some different types of feathers. 
Um, these feathers are shorter and in general when you buy a saddle you will not get as great a variety of different sizes of feathers. But um, for let's say size uh, 8, 6 and 4, something like that, these, most of these capes will be very very well suited. Also, uh, many times when you, when you buy a, a saddle, you get a longer feather. So for, uh, for palmer haggles on, on very large flies and stuff like that, these, these could, be, uh, could be the ideal. Um, but basically they're usable for the same stuff as, uh, as the capes. Uh, the, ver the variation on different sizes is just not as great. Um, then there is also the, uh, the spay saddles. Um, which is uh, the spay capes just a bit further down and, and what you get in, in one of these is, is uh, an a lot less expensive um, uh, saddle for, for tying the shrimps and, uh, and, uh, and, um, and spay, spay types of flies also. Um, the reason this is fairly more in ex uh, fairly less uh, cost fairly cost less than the, the cape is, the number of feathers here is not as great. The number of usable feathers for, for, for shrimps, for instance, is not as great. This is, could be a good option for you if, you if you're just starting out tying these shrimps and you want to just test it out. Then, uh, then this could be a good option because, because of the price. And there are definitely a lot of usable feathers, especially in this part, but there will be a lot of, a lot of these feathers that's going to be too long and give you a too big, uh, too big a hackle. What I want to do is, is uh, as you can see, these are, are very, very lively um, and, uh, and, 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 and very nice. And I'm going to try to incorporate some of these into some pike patterns. Uh, because I think the, the feathers here will be ideal for that. They will, they will have great, great movement in the water. And I'm simply just going to tie the complete feather uh, on, on a pike fly and then that's it. So, the next thing, and that is what uh, whiting is most famous for uh, regarding these saddles is uh, regarding saddles is these these are their dry fly saddles i have these in a number of different variations and a number of different colors and the amount of feathers on on a saddle like this is just beyond it's it's insane that you can get this amount of feathers on a saddle and this here right here it's a pro grade so this is the poorest of the quality of capes that Whiting provides. So um, imagine what the platine I sold was looked like. It was yeah. I, oh, I would so have loved to have shown you that one. Um, what I've done in my shop is I know that these uh, these uh, saddles are used for a lot of different stuff. So what I've done is is I look at each and every single one of these saddles. And then I, I classify them into, into uh, the best usage. So when you, for instance, when you click on the, the grizzly, the grizzly saddle in my shop, you will you will get a drop down menu that will uh, that will show you that you can buy this as either a dry fly, or if I have this one in in something that would be suitable for streamers and and saltwater flies, then you can choose that option, or you can choose it uh, for for pike flies, uh, and for pike flies these uh, I, I recommend and many people use feathers that are wider than this. Um, but also uh, the option there is an option there to choose uh, a saddle for uh, let's say uh, flat wings. So I take great care and uh, and 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 uh, and and look each and every single one of these over before I add it to the web shop to give you uh, the option to buy exactly what you need for exactly what type of uh, of uh, of flies you want to tie with that exact uh, cape uh, saddle. And also of course you can buy these in halves. And, uh, and you have the same option with the halves if you want them for pike or you want them for dry fly or you want them for, um, uh, for, uh, for flat wings. And that's something that these capes are very, very, very well suited for, are the flat wing flies. Something like this. You know, this is a small, uh, a small herring, uh, but also for sand eels and, and stuff like that. These, these, uh, these hackles here are just phenomenal for that. And of course for, for the dry flies. Um, I also have these in uh, from another company in in more vivid and more lively colors because I whiting uh, will not add uh, let's say the grizzly red and grizzly chartreuse and stuff like that in their uh, they will not dye their dry fly capes in in those color variations. So I buy some from Keok that makes very good quality of this as well. 
And what sets Keok out a bit from uh, from Whiting is that Keok has not perfected their dry flies saddles as much as uh, as Whiting has, and that's actually a good thing because then you can get the perfect feathers for your pike flies uh, like this. Uh, that is a bit wider. Uh, these are also uh, very, very, very well suited for uh, for body hackles and stuff like that. But they are in particular very well, well suited for, um, for for pike flies. But again, I have the option there that I select and and handpick the the best suited for uh, for flat wings and the best suited for pikes. And uh, so in 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 the more vibrant colors, the red and orange and stuff like that, I get those from uh, from Kiog. That makes some nice nice product as well. The last thing I want to show you is something fairly new to me. I haven't seen this before. It's the Coq de Lyon saddles. And also again, the amount of feathers here is out of this world. And the individual feathers here are just, they are just a marvel of nature. They are so amazingly beautiful, the striations and the markings and stuff like that. These are in particular very well, uh, very used uh, quite a lot for, for dry fly hackles. Uh, no, no, not dry fly hackles, dry fly tails. Uh, but of course, there are some, uh, some nice hackles here also for wet flies and stuff like that. But in general, this is some pretty big, fairly long fibered hackles. You could probably use them kind of like the spay ones, uh, but they're a bit stiffer. But they are in general longer and uh, the fibers are longer and not as well suited for um, for for body hackles for palmer hackles like the uh, like the coctillon capes is. but the feathers are just i want to take this home just to cuddle you know <laughs> so that was it about rooster uh, rooster saddles for now okay bye. Moving on to the uh, to the uh, the hen uh, the hen birds. Uh, um, the first thing I want to to really really point out is is the American hen capes. These are very 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 great quality. And uh, and the difference between the rooster and the hen feathers is the uh, the hen feathers are more dense. They're softer also, so they will move more in the water. They will not push as much water, but they 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 make a more dense hackle when you turn it. So. So these, uh, I normally ordinarily use these a lot for salmon and sea trout and steelhead patterns, kind of like on, on this Patakova, where I want uh, the fly to have kind of like a drop shape in the water when you see the profile of this. So I, I, I have a more bulky, more, more dense uh, uh, front part and then it gradually tapers down uh, to, to nothing. So, so it's kind of similar to a drop. And, and there these, uh, these uh, feathers from the, hen, uh, from the hens excel. Also, the hens are very, very nice and usable for uh, for a lot of smaller flies like this small goby. I have a front hackle here of the Brahma, and and also for nymphs and stuff like that. And that is because, um, in general, uh, there is a lot more of the really, really small hackles on uh, on the hen. The the cape is is by definition smaller than the rooster cape. So so a lot of the feathers here are smaller. Um, and that's also why, what makes them very well suited for the smaller, smaller flies, and also for the front hackles as well. Um, as I said, there is a lot of different, uh, different uh, types of, of hen capes. There is the 4B, there is the American again, and there is, uh, of course, the Brahma, which I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk more on this later on. Um, uh, regarding the salmon and the sea trout flies then uh, these are a really, really amazing, amazing uh, offer. These are called Feathermaster, and basically it's just a company who buys these from Whiting and then give them their own brand name. They're from the Whiting 4B production, and, uh, and, uh, and these are without a doubt excellent, excellent for, for front hackles on salmon and sea trout flies. Um, uh, what differs these a bit, f f where, the, where the hen is, is a little different from the, from the rooster is that these actually 
change in size as you move further and further down the bird. So, so on, on a saddle like this, this is a hen saddle, uh, you get some smaller feathers here, great for the smallest of, of salmon flies, but you get a lot of, a lot of fairly big feathers up here. So on a, on, a, on, a, on a saddle like this, you will have soft hackles, which is an, an, another thing that these are, are often called, they're called, often called soft hackles. You get a great variety of sizes, and these are very, very uh, decently priced. So, so, uh, so a saddle like this is fairly inexpensive and you have a ton of very good, very usable feathers. You can also buy a lot of soft hackles in, in packages of, of just, you know, a bundle of loose feathers. But when, when you do that, you have the same problem as with the, uh, as with the rooster. The quality of the individual feather is not as good and, uh, and, uh, and often you can't find exactly the right size for that exact uh, size of, of tube fly or, or hooked fly you're, you're tying. Uh, you, you, you will be completely free of that with, with, uh, with a saddle like this. These comes in all the right colors. Um, and uh, and are just phenomenal. I use these a lot for my uh, for my own salmon and uh, and sea trout flies. So all the right colors and uh, and and a, a very very fair price. Um, the next thing I want to show you is the Brahma. The Brahma uh, is 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 another type of uh, of of bird that has a lot of uh, a lot of striations, a lot of of markings on the feather. I'm just gonna pick out one for you to see. So these are in particular very well suited for wet flies, front hackles, but also for nymphs and, uh, and um, nymphs and emergers and stuff like that and for tails for a lot of different stuff also. Really, really great, great color combinations. Truly, truly uh, nice with all the, the different, uh, the different uh, colors on here. So great for something like this, a small, a small nymph or for something like this. Uh, a small uh, on this there are three hackles uh, so basically this is uh, this is a fly that doesn't have a body hackle but only have three hackles intended for sea trout as well uh, great great option for something like that and then the last thing um, whiting makes some of these uh, saddles here uh, uh, come with the uh, you can you can buy them with the the absolute end part of uh, of the of the of the leather of, of this is well basically I think it's this covers the butt or something like that on, on the chicken because this is the saddle and then you have this. And what you get up here is, is you get some really, really awesome uh, mini marabou feathers that are truly, truly uh, lively and, uh, and vibrant. These are great for tails on, on a lot of different uh, streamer patterns. But if you want a very soft hackle in front of your... Um, in the front of a fly, for instance, these would be great as well. So here you get the option to get uh, the full cape of all these nice, nice uh, barred and, uh, and striated uh, feathers uh, in, in different sizes. And then you get this, this full uh, patch of marabou as well. Um, and uh, and uh, Whiting have about three different lines of these and a ton of different variations. There is both Coq de Lyon and... Uh, and a lot of other things. I can't recall the two other ones, but um, some some great great quality, uh, and and in some nice colors, both for sea trout and for salt water as well, pink and orange and stuff like that, and for, of course, for uh, for salmon uh, salmon flies also. I think that about covers um, this <laughs> fairly long <laughs> tale about uh, whiting and uh, rooster and uh, and um, and hen feathers. My throat is a bit sore now, but uh, I want to thank you for, for tuning in. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, it would mean a lot to me. Of course, leave, leave a comment if you like this video, and of course, remember to like the video. And, uh, and also, if you have any, uh, anything that you want me to, to talk about, then please, please feel free to, to make a comment about that, and I will, I will try to fit it into the, the, the schedule about, uh, about in, in, a, in a future video. So thank you a lot for watching, and uh, remember, all this is available available in my fly tying shop. Otherwise, it's just there's only left to say uh, good luck out fishing and uh, well, catch you next time.